Well, hello there, and welcome. This is The Diplomat coming to you from the USA. Today is January 18th, 2019. And this will be a first of many videos. I plan to take us through all the discovery uh, from the Chris Watts case. There's a lot of pages, as you can see up here. There's 1,960 pages, and that's... Uh, even missing a hundred or so that are not included, uh, which I do not believe we can get. So um, I want to take us through. I'll be given a little opinion, but for the most part, I just want everyone to uh, read it together and uh, comment about it. And who knows what, what this will bring. Uh, my real intentions is just to continue to share the information as best as possible so we can... Um, get as many eyes and, and ears on this thing because it's just not still it's still not sitting right with everyone and so uh, we have every right to, to to do this and I think it's um it's good uh, it's good for the family it's good to uh, seek the truth and, and ensure justice being served so uh, this is the very first page uh, from the Frederick Police Department gives a case number um, Scott Kunra the uh, officer location and date of August 13, 2018. Okay. Um, by the way, this video is, uh, I'm assuming that people know about the case already. If you don't, go watch the videos. Uh, there's a lot of great uh, coverage out there um, by by different folks. Uh, you can find it very easily just searching YouTube. So um, if, you, if you don't know about the case that much yet, I, I really ask that you go and uh, get a general understanding um, before watching this video so that you can uh, you, you can know kind of what what else is going on um, uh, in the background so here are the charges that were uh, put in uh, murder in the first degree and tampering with deceased human body okay that's um, multiple of those and those are class one felonies and uh, tampering with deceased human body is class three felony all charged against Chris Watts Okay, uh, so those are the charges. This is the uh, victim, obviously being Shanann Catherine Watts, and January 10th, uh, 1984 is her date of birth. Take note of her height, 5'5", five five and weight, 148. And we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and just list her address and such. Next is the subject, which is Christopher Lee Watts. May 16th, 1985 is his date of birth. Now take a look at his height, 5'10", weight, 225. So there's a good 77 pounds between them and 5 inches of height. But that 70 plus pounds is, that's a lot of weight, right, if you think about that. That gave him a distinct advantage for sure. Um, and so that's worth noting. We go down to... Um, Obviously, the other victims being their two daughters, Celeste Catherine Watts, and uh, she was born on July 17, 2015, height of 3'1", th uh, three, one, 3 foot 1 inch, and weight 37. And then we go down to Bella, Bella Marie Watts, born December 17, 2013, height of Three foot six inches, weight of forty pounds. So something I noticed there is just um, there's a lot less difference in in height and weight, or maybe maybe just weight than I thought. If you take a if you've seen pictures, um, certain, certainly you see the height difference, but I didn't realize that there were only three pounds difference. Um, that's what that makes a huge deal. It's just um, you know with knowing what he ends up doing with them it's um, pretty interesting that they're um, they're similar in their in their uh, in the weight of their body so we keep going down we get witness number one being Nicole Atkinson God bless her um, who first uh, called Chris and uh, the cops her son Nicholas Atkinson Okay, you got some redacted information, which is always nice to see them cutting some of that stuff out. And then Nate, uh, uh, Nathan, who is uh, the neighbor who had 
the um, the security uh, camera footage. So, you know, another godsend. And Taylor Welch, who I believe was the babysitter, if I'm not mistaken. I'm just going to look it up real quick. While I'm here, um, well, I can't find it. So anyway, um, I think that's the babysitter. Uh, we can look at that again later. I was actually surprised to see that there. I didn't realize there was another witness, unless that was the that was the the daughter, I guess, um, Nicole's daughter. That's probably who that was. Um, so this is a uh, rest of uh, Chris Watts, arrestee suspects. Uh, so that's uh, just additional personal information on him. Okay, so then we get into the narrative, and let's go through this, um, uh, you know, word by word. On August 13, 2018, at approximately 1340 hours, um, this uh, officer was dispatched to 2825 Saratoga Trail on a report of check well-being. Nicole Atkinson, her best friend, called about her friend, Shanann Watts. Nicole stated she dropped Shanann off around 148 hours this morning. Nicole stated that Shanann was 15 weeks pregnant and was not feeling well. Nicole had dropped her off after her business flight from Arizona. Shanann was not answering phone calls or texts and had missed her doctor's appointment. Nicole and her son, Nicole Atkinson, Nicholas Atkinson, went to the Watts residence and observed Shanann's car in the garage. The vehicle still had child seats inside of it. Nicole attempted to enter the front door, but it had a latch, which prevents you from opening it more than three inches. Nicole had Shanann's husband, Christopher Watts, and uh, called... Shanann's husband, Christopher Watts, and requested he come home and check on Shanann. Nicole stated Shanann was diabetic, but was not known to have seizures or to ever black out. Upon arrival, I checked the front door. Nicole entered the password and it opened. The door had a safety latch, which prevented it from opening more than a few inches. I announced police department and heard no noises from Shanann or her children, Celeste Watts and Bella. I did not see anything through the windows that was out of ordinary. I checked all windows in the rear slider door. All were locked, and the slide and glass door had a lock bar on it. Nicole kept saying Christopher was not coming. She had called him several times, and he kept giving her different arrival times. I contacted Christopher by phone and asked for the garage door code. Christopher stated it did not work from the outside. He was about five minutes away at the time. So if you put yourself in the shoes of that officer, right, you arrive on the scene, you have this... Uh, friend who's obviously a, a nervous looking seems con very concerned um says her, her friend who's always in touch is is just gone in that her car is there and then all of a sudden you start running into issue after issue right away so first it's the safety latch so you can't get into the house her friend can't get into the house that's odd. Then obviously you don't hear anyone in the house and you call out to them. So there's obviously no one there or they're um, incapacitated. You don't see anything, you don't hear anything, but you can't get in. And then on top of that, Nicole um, uh, tells you that the husband is, is not coming or uh, she, you know, he keeps giving her different times. Um, and then on top of all that, you contact the husband and get try to get the garage door code. And of course, that doesn't work, right? So within, I don't know, n you know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, you have safety latch issue, number one. Nobody can be found or heard of, number two. Um, actually, you have concerned friend, which is, so we'll make it number three. Um, then the husband says he, he's not coming. She's having trouble getting hold of him. And then also he's giving several times, um, uh, different times that, of arrival. And then number six, the garage door doesn't work. I mean, this, this cop must have known right from the bat that something was not right. And the fact that he was already getting different arrival uh, time stories from the husband, uh, red flags must have went off in this officer's head in a very short amount of time. When Christopher arrived, went 
inside through the garage to check for Shanann and the two children. Christopher gave consent to check the entire home. No one was found in the residence. Christopher did not come up to me holding, uh, sorry, did come up to me holding Shanann's wedding ring and stated he found it on the nightstand. When Nicole asked where Shanann's phone was, Christopher went to the couch upstairs and found it between the cushions. In fact, that's not accurate, I believe. I think it was Nicholas who found it um, from the video. Her son found it. Um, but he did find the ring, but he didn't find it. We, it's very clear he went and got it, if you see that video. Uh, he did not know what the password was to Shanann's phone. But Nicole knew it. Yep, that's right. Concerned friend Nicole knew the password to the phone. Unconcerned husband Chris didn't know the password to his own wife's phone. All of a sudden. And not only that, if you look at the video, Chris says, it used to be four digits, it's now six digits. So, you know, I imagine that was a huge red flag for this cop as well. You know, he can't get into the phone. Why? And she can. Hmm. Um, and uh, so she, anyway, Nicole got it on. Christopher gave consent to look at her phone. No calls were made that morning. I contacted uh, Detective uh, Baumhover and requested he come to the residence. Christopher stated Shanann arrived home from a trip around 200 hours. He was uh, asleep at the time. He woke up around 500 hours to get ready for work, and they began talking about them separating. Right, because right when you wake up, you talk about separating. Christopher stated it was a civil conversation, and they were not arguing. The, the term Chris always uses is emotional, over and over, emotional. We had an emotional conversation. You'll notice with Chris, if you watch a lot of the video, he has these certain words or phrases or sentences, or <laughs> maybe full paragraphs recited you could tell with the things he brought to the truck with these you know it was an emotional conversation a lot of these things you if you watch enough you see that he's repeat he repeats it he repeats it in the um interrogation room and so on so it's uh you could tell he's got this narrative in his brain that he's sticking to um uh, they were emotional though christopher stated that they had been talking about separating for a few weeks christopher stated that about 527 hours uh, he backed his truck up to the garage to load up tools and left. Christopher stated he had uh, tools tools stolen in the past, and now he unloads his truck on his Fridays. I don't know. He un now he unloads his truck on his Fridays? Okay, on Fridays, I guess, over, over the weekend, whatever. Christopher stated Shanann was in bed at the time. Christopher stated Shanann told him she was going to a friend's house today with her two children christopher stated he did not ask shanann which friend's house he was go uh, she was going to christopher stated he went on uh, went to a job site oil uh, uh, past hudson colorado to check on it christopher stated he was there alone for a few hours christopher said he was an operator for anna darko shanann's mother called during this time and was adamant that christopher had done something and that i needed to check the gps on his truck Christopher's tr work truck has GPS on it. So right away, right, still, it's still very early in this whole situation. And you got the mother, the mother of the husband. I'm sorry, the mother of, uh, mother-in-law of the husband saying Chris has something to do with this. And that they need to check his GPS on his truck right away. The cop's also now hearing that. So think about that. You got everything else that we talked about above. Now you have Shanann's mom telling the uh, the officer that Chris must have something to do with it, and they have to check the GPS. It just signs that there's been things going on. You know, as an officer going in, I imagine, you know, for us it's very easy just to look at the situation here. But as an officer, I'm sure you're you're realizing there's a lot of backstory to this. Right, um, you can't take anything, everything someone says as as gospel. But you know, if you get a a normal response from from the the person who's missing's mother, saying that he had something to do with it, you're going to take it seriously. Detective Baumover and I checked the residence thoroughly. Shannon's purse, wallet, phone, credit cards, etc., were at the residence. We observed nothing suspicious inside the residence, vehicles, or garage that gave the appearance of an altercation. So, not nothing suspicious 
ambitious in general, but that there was any kind of altercation, right? So no um, broken glass or, um, you know, obviously no blood or anything like that, and no signs of fighting. The master bed had the comforter, sheets, and pillows removed. Huge red flag. The fitted sheet was next to the comforter on the floor, and the pillows were on the other side of the bed on the floor. I did not observe the top sheet anywhere. We know where that was. Nicole stated Shanann works from home, and it is extremely unusual for her to leave without her phone. She does direct sales and doesn't go anywhere without it. I checked with neighbors to see if anyone observed someone coming or going. Nate was called Nate, neighbor to the east, showed me his home video surveillance. At 0148 hours, Nicole's vehicle is observed leaving. The video does not show it arriving. At 527 hours, Christopher's truck is observed being backed into the driveway. Nate and Nicole both stated they had never seen him back into the driveway before. It leaves a short time later. The rear of the truck was obscured by, from the camera by the garage. The video shows no other vehicles coming or going. The garage door of the residence was checked. It did not open from the outside, but did open and close from within. So there's a few items there. The video does show another co vehicle coming or going, and I believe it's one of the other neighbors going to work um, or the gym. Um, also, um, you know, it goes into saying it just leaves a short time later, but there's a lot of things that went on with, with him, and obviously the, the cop didn't get the greatest of view, and it, he didn't have the zoomed-in um, uh, method that we have when we're sitting at our computer, um, and, and so on. But, um, you know, he got to go over and, and see the video, and obviously that was a huge red flag that now the neighbor and the friend is saying, he's never done that before. So it's just red. If you look, there's, we're how many pages in? We're on page six. How many red flags have you guys counted already? <laughs> he was doomed. He was doomed. I mean, he, he should have just gave up right there. I mean, in all honesty, I, it just, it's baffling. It's absolutely baffling thinking that he went through all the lying after this, you know. But he did. So um, I'm going to stop the first video there. I hope you guys like it. I hope you like going through it this way. Uh, if you have any feedback, let me know, especially on... Um, know how I'm talking through it if there's anything that's um, annoying or <laughs> or anything like that let me know so I can fix it um, but I really enjoy going through it this way um, and uh, you know we'll see what comes and if you guys like it you know I'll continue to do them um, I'll probably need hundreds <laughs> to go through it all but hey if you guys are willing to, to watch and listen it to it um, I'm willing to make them and uh, you know I just uh, want to keep going through this stuff and sharing more I've become very uh, you know interested in this case it hits home in a lot of ways um, in the sense that I have um, a child and um, you know I've also gone gone through things in the past with uh, interesting relationships and so you I think it's what's fascinating about this case you know you can identify a lot um, with uh, with things you know with Shanann's situation um, you know, so I think we can identify a lot with the situation, and it's just a regular, you know, seemingly a regular family. So um, I think that's what's so fascinating. It's so sad, and um, but you know, this is what we can do for them as a as a community. This is what we can do for them without um, you know pushing too hard. You know, even just reading through this to get it more eyes and ears on it. Um, maybe we maybe we see something someone hasn't. I don't know. But um, I think none of us are going to rest until we really can uh, try our best to, to seek the truth. And when I say us, you know, a lot of these creators on YouTube, um, folks like the Armchair De Detective, Mommy Rambling uh, blog that have inspired me. So shout out to them. So uh, anyway, have a good one and I uh, hope to talk to you soon.